I will be answering some long-stand open questions about the power of selective open attacks. This is a joint work with Mihi Bellari, Brent Waters, and Scott Leck. Selective open attacks may be considered for many primitives, but commitment has emerged as the most basic and fundamental one. So I will begin with it. A commitment scheme for us will be given by a single polynomial, polynomial time algorithm E. It takes as input some message M and some coins R and produces some cipher test C. In terms of usage, there are two phases. To commit to a message M, the sender picks some coins and produces the cipher test. Later on, he can open the message by sending the message and the randomness to the receiver. The receiver then checks that the cipher test was correctly generated. There are two standard security requirements. Hide is a security guarantee for the sender, and it asks that the receiver should not be able to learn anything about the message given the cipher test. And bind is a security guarantee for the receiver, and it asks that the sender should not be able to generate a commitment that can later be opened to two different messages. We call this notion of security hide and bind security. So commitment schemes are a, a basic and widely used tool in cryptography. They are used, for instance, for zero-knowledge proofs, and they, there are many constructions. To be more concrete, we will recall some of the constructions, since our results will apply to them, as well as other constructions. Uh, the first one is person commitment. A prime order group and some generators, G and H, are public. And the commitment corresponding to some message M and some coins R is given by G to the power M times H to the power R. Uh, one can also use a collision hesitant hash function and a strong structure to obtain a commitment scheme. Our result will say that both these schemes are not selective open secure. Uh, selective open security is a strong form of hiding, so we'll begin by recalling in more detail the standard hiding definition. There should be some message distribution, and the security guarantee is that the adversary cannot figure out anything about the message other than what's implied by the message distribution itself. Uh, this is a semantic security style definition and can be formalized by asking that there should be a simulator that don't see the cipher test but does as well as the adversary. Uh, selective open attacks is, what, is about what happens in scenarios where there are many possible related messages being committed to. So we introduce some vector notation. Uh, M is the vector of messages. The components may be related to each other. R is a vector of independent coins. Uh, we also use some shorthand notation for the operation of committing to many messages element-wise. We committed to the first message using the first coins and so on. And C is the resulting vector of commitments. Uh, in order to better explain the difficulties in achieving selective open security, we start with an example in which the difficulties are absent. Namely, this is selective open and the messages only openings. Uh, the challenge picks some message according to the distribution D, and then the adversary can uh, select some set of the messages to be open, and he receives this message, but not the others. And the security guarantee is that the adversary should not be able to figure out anything about the unopened message. That means anything uh, beside what is implied by the distribution and the open messages. And a basic question there is, does hide and bind security imply selective open security in this scenario? The answer is yes. Uh, the proof is a hybrid argument one and exploits the fact that the adversary is not given proof of correct open. But this is not the case in which selective open uh, the case of selective open where the difficulties arise. So now we present the selective open scenario in which we are interested. Namely, now the coins are also open. Uh, the security guarantee that we want to achieve is the same. And now the important question is if hide and bind security implies selective open security in this scenario. 
Uh, this is a long stand open question. There was no proof of the implication, but also no counterexample. Our result for commitment is that there is some uh, commitment scheme for which, uh, which is highly unbiased security, but not selective open secure. Okay, this answers the long stand open question, but are the counterexamples artificial? Is it the case that all the real used in privacy schemes are selective open secure? In fact, not. Uh, our result is much stronger. We proved that all commitment schemes that are highly unbind secure are not selective open secure. In particular, these schemes that we present before. Uh, so given any highly unbind co secure commitment scheme, we present an attack in breaking the selective open security. Uh, we also have investigated the problem for encryption schemes, and there we proved that there are some real encryption schemes that are not selective open security under coins openings, and also there are some real encryption schemes that are not secure under key openings. We'll define this later. Uh, okay, what was present before? Uh, it's a high-level explanation. In order to state the result, we need to see the definition of security in more detail. Uh, the security definition that we use is the one introduced by the Orc now, Ryan Gold and Stockmeyer. Uh, the real game goes as indicated previously, but now there is also a relation. And the adversary should uh, output some string that uh, satisfy the relation. Uh, the relation basically takes as input uh, the adversary output, the message vector, and the set of open messages and outputs a boolean. The adversary wins if the relation outputs true. But now there is also a simulator that plays uh, the game in the, the ideal game. And the simulator don't receive any commitment. And then he cho should choose some set to be open and should out also output some, uh, generate some output that's checked by the relation. The simulator also wins if the relation returns true. Uh, and we can define the selective open advantage as the difference between the winning probability of both of them. And a commitment scheme is said to be selective open secure if for every efficient adversary A, there is an efficient uh, simulator such that the selective open advantage is negligible. So our result uh, basically assumes the existence of a collision-resistant hash function, and we take uh, any highly unbind commitment scheme, and we show that there are some message distribution D, uh, some relation, and some adversaries such that all simulators will imply a high selective open advantage. Uh, we should also stress that the message that we consider are independently and uh, uniformly distributed. Uh, thus, we are, pres uh, we are present uh, an attack against the selective open security. Uh, we should also highlight that we don't assume that the simulation is black box. Okay, so selective open security for commitment was first investigated by Dior, Knauer, Reingold, and Stockmeyer. Uh, in our recent work, Hoffenheis have showed some uh, Impossibility results for black box, black box reductions for standard assumptions, but uh, this do doesn't rule out the existence of such schemes because the security reduction could be non-black box or a scheme could be reduced to some non-standard assumption. Uh, so our results are not about the difficulties involved in improved selective open security. They are about the impossibility of obtaining such schemes. In particular, the schemes that we presented before are not secure. Uh, so we are not like finding artificial examples. We are like saying that uh, the real used in commitment schemes are not selective open secure. Uh, it was believed that the difficulty of achieving selective open security was due to the fact that the messages could be related to each other. But in our case, they are not. So uh, it was proved before that for independent messages, uh, high unbind security implies selective open security, but in a restricted version of this security definition. So our result is implying that uh, this will not be extended to the full definition. So there is no contradiction. And 
okay, what about the random Oracle model? We know that it's possible to obtain efficient schemes that are selective open secure in the programmable random Oracle model. Our result says that this is not possible in the standard and non-programmable random Oracle models. Uh, so let's take a look at the previous separation results. Uh, Nielsen showed that for non-committed encryptions, uh, Efficient schemes can be achieved in the programmable random Oracle model, but not in the standard and non-programmable random Oracle models. Uh, but our result is not about efficiency. It's about feasibility. Uh, in terms of uh, feasibility separations, uh, Dodds, Katz, Smith, and Wolfish uh, proved a, separa a separation result for deniable authentication. Uh, okay, we are present all the results for the one-shot scenario, but this can be extended if the messages are super logarithmic in the security parameter. Okay, so the idea of the proof is the following. We use some collision resistant hash function with output length h, and uh, the challenge sets the number of senders should be two times h and picks uh, independent and uniformly distributed messages. Uh, the adversary hash the ciphertest vector to obtain some string, and he chose the vector of senders to be corrupted uh, in the following way. Uh, he corrupts half of the senders, and basically the important point here is that the set of corrupt senders is an encoding of the hash output. This is the most important part here. Um, okay, and when he receives the message and the coins, he just outputs this, all the cipher tests that were received and the, the coins also. And the relation basically recomputes the hash and check two conditions. First one, if the set of corrupt senders was correctly generated. Second one, if the openings are correct for the corrupt senders. Uh, okay, so they specify that the uh, adversary uh, always make the relation return true. Now suppose that some simulator could also make the relation return true with high probability. Uh, we will show that this would imply that either the, the simulator can be used to break the collision resistance of the hash function or to violate the binding condition of the commitment scheme. Uh, the idea is to execute the simulator until the point where uh, it selects the set of senders to be corrupted. And then we run two different executions, uh, sampling different message vectors. And okay, and we can use the reset lemma to relate the probability, of, the winning probability of the original simulator to the probability that both executions succeed and uh, they have at least one message that is different in the open positions. Okay, but if it, this is the case, then either uh, the ciphertest vectors are different, and this implies a collision in the hash function, or the ciphertest vectors are equal, and this implies the, a violation in the binding condition. Okay, uh, I will now talk a little bit about selective open attacks for encryption schemes. Uh, selective open first are, uh, appeared in the context of encryption, but it was soon noted that the problem is really, uh, the core of the problem is that uh, most uh, typical encryption schemes are committing. So this led to the focus on the commitment problem that we just showed that's impossible to achieve. But for encryption, uh, it's possible to build efficient schemes. Uh, they have been built based on uh, loss encryption, uh, deniable encryption, also based on non-commit encryption, but in this case they are not efficient. Uh, okay, but the basic question is still open. Uh, is it the case that all uh, INCPA secure encryption schemes are also selective open secure? Or we really needed these specific constructions? Uh, there was no proof of counterexample. Uh, so for instance, is Elgamal uh, selective open secure? Uh, so our result for encryption schemes is that there is some encryption scheme that is INCPA secure but not selective open secure. In fact, it's much stronger. We say that every commit encryption scheme is not selective open secure. Uh, we define what committing means in the paper. Uh, uh, so the result applies for 
ElgaMAL or most typical encryption schemes, so we are not find artificial counterexamples. Uh, uh, we should mention that there is also an uh, indistinguishability style definition of security for selective opening, and we will show some relations between these different notions. Uh, so our result implies that INCPA don't implies uh, selective open according to the simulation definition. Uh, it was already known that the simulation definition implies the indistinguishability one. Uh, the converse is not true because our theorem holds for independent messages. And it was also known that selective open implies INCPA. But the important open question is whether INCPA implies the indistinguishability definition of selective open security. Uh, in a recent work, uh, the relations have been further clarified, but this question is still open. Uh, okay, in the context of encryption, we can also define the problem where the receivers instead of the senders are corrupted. In this case, the, the secret keys are open instead of the coins, and uh, we can formulate similarly the problem. And uh, the question is also the same, like, does uh, NCPA implies selective open in this scenario. Uh, this question was also open, and we defined the notion of decryption verifiability. This is, strong, uh, this is a weak form of robustness. For instance, ElgaMAL is not robust, but is, this, is decryption verifiable. And we proved that all encryption schemes that are decryption verifiable are not selective open on the key openings. So this raises the question of whether it's possible to achieve efficient schemes in this scenario or not. Uh, Nielsen uh, proved that, that any non-commitment scheme, encryption scheme, should have uh, long keys in the sense that the keys should be larger than the total size of the messages ever encrypted using the scheme. And we know that uh, non-commit encryption implies uh, selective open uh, on the key openings, but the converse is still open. So one could hope that it's possible to achieve some uh, efficient uh, scheme in this scenario, but th that is an additional result. Uh, basically, uh, selective schemes that are efficient, that are selective open and secure and the key openings should have long keys. Uh, this is not in the abstract. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, to finish, I will repeat the results again. Uh, first, uh, every hide and bind securing commitment is not selective open secure. Every committing encryption scheme is not selective open on the coins openings. So we really needed the uh, schemes that are specifically designed to be selective open secure. Uh, every decryption verifiable encryption scheme is not selective open on the key openings. And s schemes that are selective in open secure and the uh, key openings should have long keys. Thank you for your attention. We have time for questions. Thank you. Uh, so you, you, you showed that the schemes which are not selective open secure are not artificial because they all are actually. Uh, but uh, should I repeat my question? You don't. Sorry. All right. Let me try again. Uh, you showed that uh, the schemes which are not selective, open, secure are not at all artificial. My question is: Is the relation that shows that they are not secure is that relation real? Is that one artificial? Sorry, I, I couldn't understand the question. Sorry. So let me try again. Which relation you mean? Yeah. The, in, or, in order to, to, to show that these schemes are not selective, open, secure, yeah. you needed to define this relation, rel, which makes it fail, right? Yeah. My question is, the schemes are not artificial. Is that relation artificial? I mean, for the security definition, you can consider any relation, is the point. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. All right, forget it. Yes, please, in the back. Uh, do you have these results in the sense of uh, commitment schemes and that they are novel or that they are active commitment schemes? 
Uh, this is for no interactive committing schemes. There are positive results for, no interactive, sorry. There are positive res results for interactive ones, yeah. Uh, in the middle, yes. So m maybe taking the first question again, but perhaps trying to express it in a different way. Um, one of your conclusions on the previous slide um, is that because the, the existing constructions don't give you selective open security, maybe we, you need special, new specially designed constructions that will. Yeah. Um, but I guess maybe the question back is, is the notion of selective open security actually correct? If it took such an artificial um, relationship to prove it, prove it wrong, it, do, would, do we really care about relationships like that, or is actually the, the, is, is the target too, too, too high? Too, uh, is, is this, does the definition need changing? I mean, uh, the indistinguishability definition of security, for instance, uh, is weak in the sense that it cannot, it don't work for all message distributions. So, for instance, in my opinion, uh, a good question here is to investigate definitions that are in the middle between the simulation and the distinguishability one and see what happens there. Okay, if there's no more questions, let's thank Raphael again. <laughs>